So Al Jazeera have released another video in the Labour Files series, this time with Martin Ford himself. Now Martin Ford was appointed by Keir Starmer to investigate the party after the famous Labour leak showed anti-black racism, Islamophobia and factionism. Now we know there was a media blackout when it came to the Ford report, so this is Martin in his own words when being interviewed by Al Jazeera. I've had very limited communication with the General Secretary, David Evans, but that was really housekeeping. Um, I have spoken to a caucus of black Labour Party MPs in the House of Commons. Other than that, I've, I've not spoken to anybody um, within the party machinery. My slight anxiety is in terms of the perception of a hierarchy and genuine underlying concerns about the wider racial issues that it's not, in my view, a sufficient response to say that was then, this is now. These are serious debates that need to be had in a respectful context and I just feel there's, there's work to be done. Stunning, isn't it? A QC who conducted hours and hours of important work sanctioned by Keir Starmer himself has had little to no impact. No impact on the media and no impact on the party itself. Why? I don't know what Starmer was expecting to find, but the fact that Starmer hasn't contacted Martin, seemingly hasn't implemented any of his recommendations, tells me that Starmer didn't expect to see what was revealed in the Ford report. There's been no mention of it from Labour since the findings have occurred. Now let's just say that the Ford report had contradicted the Labour leaks and it actually made the left look bad. Do you think there would be silence? Not a chance. The Labour leadership would use it for factional gain, just like the EHRC. The media would actually cover it and respond in the same way as the EHRC. Are you seeing a pattern here? Why is the EHRC report treated differently to the Ford report? Both are investigating racism, yet yield far different reactions. I'll tell you why. Two reasons. One, because it vindicated the left and Jeremy Corbyn. The media doesn't find that interesting. Two, because anti-black racism, Islamophobia is not taken seriously. The media simply don't care. This is what Ford himself referred to as a hierarchy of racism. This charge, which is true by the way, was made against the party. What I'm saying, and I'm certainly not alone in this, is that the hierarchy of racism exists through politics in general. Think how seriously cases of anti-Semitism are treated. The response from EHRC, the fact that Corbyn's name is still brought up years later with this name entangled with the word anti-Semitism. Which, by the way, it's a very good thing that anti-Semitism is taken seriously. But any other forms of racism, especially those identified in the Labour Leagues and the Ford Report, are not. This is what makes it sickening in which the current Labour leadership and the commentaria navel-gazing at the left and its apparent racism, completely ignoring the fact that it's not a factional issue, and engage in cover-ups in different forms of racism. You can see how they operate. They don't care about anti-Semitism or any other racism. They only care when they can see it as a way to attack their political opponents. Even after multiple black women Labour MPs spoke about the Ford report, there's silence from Starmer and the media. They are ignoring the BAME community. The Ford report also exposed John Webb's absolute sham of a documentary. If you didn't know about it, Panorama did a hit piece on Labour. It was a complete one-sided documentary on how bad anti-Semitism was under Corbyn's labour. Check out this clip. This will give you a taster of how disgraceful it was. Ford also expressed concern about a second segment in the Panorama film. Um, but also included... It featured a Labour Party investigator who was Jewish describing an interview he'd conducted. And we finished the interview. The person got up to leave the room and then turned back to me and said, where are you from? And I said, what do you mean, where am I from? And she said, I asked you, where are you from? And I said, I'm not prepared to discuss this. And they said, are you from Israel? What can you say to that? You are assumed to be in cahoots with, with the Israeli government. It's this obsession with the fact that, that just spills over all the time into anti-Semitism. The Labour Files interviewed the party member involved who is also Jewish. When he says, um, where are you from? Are you from Israel? That's an absolute lie. 
I didn't say that. She had a recording of the interview which showed she, in fact, asked what branch of the Labour Party he belonged to. So I'm just curious about, like, what branch are you in? I don't think that's relevant. Oh, OK. I was concerned that the uh, two uh, elderly ladies um, had a tape recording of a meeting where they were later accused of anti-Semitism, which to my ear revealed nothing of the sort. How is that for journalistic integrity? John Ware's documentary genuinely has the same standards of the likes of Guido Fawkes or Fox News. There is none. It was completely misleading. Now I'm very, very happy that more and more people are realising the fraud that is John Ware. And seemingly, he isn't a very pleasant person. This is what happened when John Ware discovered that Martin Ford had completely exposed him. While the media showed little interest in reporting his findings, Ford did receive pressure from Britain's national broadcaster to alter his report. In July 2019, the BBC's main current affairs programme, Panorama, released a documentary fiercely critical of Corbyn's handling of anti-Semitism within the party. Ford said Panorama's use of internal Labour Party emails was... ..entirely misleading. The document I'm holding is an email from Karen Whiteman, who's the editor of Panorama. I would be grateful if you would consider amending your report in respect of your references to Panorama, so that it more fairly reflects what the programme actually said. I also received uh, emails from John Ware, who was the, the lead reporter for that documentary. John Ware's email said, Your report has done significant damage to my reputation and to that of the Corporation for Journalistic Integrity. May I ask you to respond by 4 p.m. tomorrow, 11th of October? I was a little taken aback. The tone was rather like a letter before action that, you know, I might see in, in litigation. No, John. Martin Ford didn't damage your reputation. He just exposed you. The damage was done by yourself because you have no integrity. I'm glad your reputation is being destroyed. You deserve no less. Now, this whole thing stemmed from the Labour leaks which was broken by Navarra. A group of Labour staffers leaked information regarding fascism, the weaponization of anti-Semitism, undermining Corbyn, anti-black racism and Islamophobia. They revealed infamous WhatsApp messages which showed some in Labour HQ trying to throw the election and shared disgusting messages about Diane Abbott. Martin Ford said that those that leaked the information were doing their absolute conscientious best and have been unfairly maligned. These same people are currently being sued by the party. Labour's response to the proof that there was a cesspit of racism against Bain people, the disgust towards Diane Abbott, is not to address it, but to cover it up. So we do have a hierarchy of racism. If you're Bain, if you are a Muslim, well, too bad, there's no one to look out for you. I've provided links below to all of the episodes of Al Jazeera's Labour Files documentary. It's one of the very rare pieces of journalism in the mainstream media. They did fantastic work on this, in which the British media clearly doesn't anymore. We live in a post-truth era, but I'm not talking about the obvious outlets such as GB News, the tabloid press, Fox News. I'm saying that the BBC and the rest of the mainstream media are just as culpable in this utterly broken and disgraceful media in the country.